partnership with the Star Media Group has allowed us to mobilize our group's collective resources to support the nominees and winners' efforts and empower them to build sustainable and scalable solutions for the communities they serve. Over the years, we have seen the continuous progress of Gamuda Inspiration Award winners in mobilizing their efforts to solve various rapid mounting issues. Their resilience not only increased yes, and Gamuda's impact in improving the lives of communities as a whole, but ultimately inspired many agents of social change to do the same. The positive impact made by Gamuda Inspiration Award winners is the backbone of Yes and Gamuda's continued efforts to scaling up community investments, particularly in innovating various social, economic and environmental solutions among communities. Hello everyone, good evening and welcome to the virtual winner's announcement of Star Golden Hearts Award 2021. I am Julian and I'm happy to be your host for this meaningful event. Running for the seventh year, this is the first time we are broadcasting the announcement so that everyone can watch and celebrate the winners together. Star Golden Hearts Award is an annual awards program organized by the Star and Yayasan Gamuda to recognize and celebrate everyday Malaysian unsung heroes. Through their social focus work, be it supporting vulnerable communities or conserving the environment, these selfless individuals, groups and organisations have made positive impacts on society while promoting unity amongst Malaysians. Tonight, we are here to reveal this year's 10 winners. And not only that, we'll also be hearing from three past winners on useful tips and advice on how you can do good. More on that later on. To start, it is my pleasure to invite Esther Ng, Chief Content Officer of Star Media Group, to give her welcome remarks. A very good evening to the esteemed panel of judges, winners of Star Golden Hearts Award 2021, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for joining us today for this very special occasion. Star Golden Hearts Award has come a long way. Seven years ago, the star embarked on a search for Malaysia's unsung heroes. While the award began with the aim of recognising heroes who had performed acts of bravery or goodwill, we have progressed towards recognising social-focused individuals, groups and organisations that contribute sustainably towards having a better society. Through the years, Malaysians responded with their nominations, and in the past year with the pandemic upon us, the response has been even more abundant. This shows that by and large, Malaysians are a caring bunch who are always ready to help each other through good and bad times. The recent unprecedented challenges brought out the best in Malaysians. We have seen individuals stepping up to help others in their immediate communities. We have also seen charities and social enterprises mobilising their resources to provide sustainable and long-term solutions to meet social challenges. This crisis has put to the forefront our collective ability as a nation to support each other. 
We all have a role to play, be it the government, businesses or ordinary people. This is where the star comes in. This being the star's 50th anniversary, we take pride in our role to shape the nation. As a media organisation, we hear stories of quiet heroes who make little and big changes, and we are in a unique position to be able to reach out and influence the masses. This award does that by showcasing exemplary individuals who work tirelessly towards helping and uniting Malaysians. By telling the stories to a wider audience, we hope the publicity will help them garner more support to contribute their extraordinary to continue their extraordinary work. Beyond that, we also want their acts of doing good to be known more widely and to serve as inspiration to fellow Malaysians to carry out their own kind deeds. This is what Star Golden Hearts Award aims to achieve to amplify the ripple effects of compassion, kindness and appreciation that will help make Malaysia a better place. Many, if not most of us, may think that the help we render would not be enough to bring about changes. But over the years, the nominees for this award have proven just the contrary. Ladies and gentlemen, today we recognise and celebrate 10 deserving winners who have demonstrated unwavering commitment to their respective social causes and have made significant differences to the communities they serve. Firstly, I want to thank Chief Judge Tan Sri Lee Lam Thai and my fellow panel of judges for doing the unenviable job of selecting the top 10 winners from a very competitive pool of nominations. I had the honour of being one of the judges and I must say I'm very impressed by the nominees' creativity and originality in carrying out their brand of social work. On, on behalf of Star Media Group, I would also like to express our heartfelt appreciation to Yayasan Gamuda for being our ever-supportive award partner for the sixth consecutive year. Together, we have identified and recognised many deserving heroes and more importantly, help them further their causes to make even greater impact in society. Each year, the Foundation presents a, the coveted Gamuda Inspiration Award and 50,000 ringgit to one winner selected from 10 winners. This is a testament to, to Yayasan Gamuda's commitment and belief in the award as well as the good work of the winners. This special award will no doubt be a great motivation and booster for the winner's work. So a big thank you to Yayasan Gamuda. We could have asked for a better partner and I hope that we can accomplish more together in the future. Last but not least, I extend my heartiest congratulations to the winners. Tough times call for tough heroes. And even in the darkest of times, you have shown that the good side of humanity is still very much alive amongst us. We are humbled by your selfless acts and at the same time very proud to celebrate your contributions to society. Thank you for showing how little goes a long way and, a helping, and for helping to bridge the gap in our communities. I hope this award will spur the winners to continue being a beacon of light for those who need them most and serve as inspiration to all of us. Thank you. Thank you, Esther, for your warm remarks. Ladies and gentlemen, every year, Star Golden Hearts Award receives hundreds of nominations from the public. It is truly no easy task to evaluate, shortlist and select the final winners. Hence, our panel of esteemed judges consists of well-respected experts and activists who have the breadth and depth of knowledge and experience in the social sector. On the panel, we have Chief Judge Tan Sri Lilam Thai, who is also a trustee of the Malaysia Unity Foundation, Puan Sharifa Alawia, who is the head of Yayasan Gamuda, Ms. Esther Ng, Chief Content Officer of Star Media Group, Datin Paduka Che Asma Ibrahim, former Yayasan Kebajikan Negara CEO and Environmental Advocate, Professor Dato Dr. Adiba Kamaruzaman, Professor of Medicine at University Malaya, 
and President of International Aid Society. Puan Farah Othman, Vice President of People, Malaysian Global Innovation and Creativity Centre, better known as MAGIC. Syed Asmi Al-Habshi, a prominent social advocate. And last but not least, Ms. Vijaya Kumari Pillai, a child protection consultant and former Social Welfare Department Assistant Director. Thank you to all judges for your time and effort. With that, let's welcome Chief Judge Tan Sri Lee Lam Thai to share his thoughts on behalf of the panel of judges. A very good evening to my fellow panel of judges, winners of the Star Golden Hearts Award 2021. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my great honour to be a part of this event. In fact, for the seventh consecutive year as the Chief Judge of Star Golden Hearts Award. Since its inception in 2015, I'm pleased to witness the award growing from strength to strength into an impactful social initiative, not only receiving a steady number of nominations every year, but also the far-reaching impact on winners through the greater exposure and support they receive. This year, we received over 450 nominations, comprising a good mix of individuals, groups and organisations from all over Malaysia. It is highly encouraging to know that there are many Malaysians out there who continue to bring hope to those in need. Through unity of purpose, their efforts are recognised by their fellow Malaysians and prompted them to nominate their heroes. My fellow panel of judges would concur with me that the pool of nominations grows stronger year on year, this year exceptionally so. And beyond addressing immediate basic needs of vulnerable communities, affected by the COVID-19 pandemic. We have also seen nominees implementing innovative and sustainable solutions in tackling social issues. All nominees have their own strength and expertise. And as you can imagine, deciding on the final 10 winners was not an easy task. For the past seven years, the judging experience and the privilege of learning about the inspiring unsung heroes have kept me coming back every year. I might have been in the social scene for many years now, but the nominees have never failed to enlighten me on new and creative ways that social efforts can be carried out. For that, I'm honoured and glad to be part of an esteemed panel of judges who each have the breadth and the depth of experience that proved valuable to the judging process. Together, we deliberated and decided on this year's winners who best encapsulate the objectives of the Star Golden Hearts Award. Thank you, my fellow judges. Ladies and gentlemen, Today, we celebrate this year's 10 winners and all the nominees who have made tremendous sacrifices in terms of time, money, safety and comfort to do something good for fellow Malaysians. These everyday heroes are the stewards of national unity and ethnic bridge builders that Malaysia greatly needs today. As the country reels from the effects of the pandemic, kindness and compassion amongst the people are essential for national recovery. These heroes are a reaffirmation of Malaysians' enduring spirit. They have shown how, when people step up and actively choose to support one another, be it through big or small efforts, we can collectively ensure that no one is left behind. 
I would also like to take this opportunity to pay tribute to our country's frontliners who have tirelessly carried out their duties in the battle against COVID-19. From healthcare workers to law enforcers, essential service workers to volunteers, they are the best embodiment of selfless heroes to whom we owe a profound debt. Ladies and gentlemen, to this end, I congratulate the STAR, STAR Foundation and Yayasan Gamuda for not only keeping this award running for the seventh consecutive year, but also taking it to greater heights year on year. It is important that initiatives like this are continued to provide a platform to recognize unsung heroes and more importantly, contribute to the greater national agenda of nation building and promotion of unity. With that, I congratulate all winners of the Star Golden Hearts Award 2021. Congratulations. The country needs more people like you to bridge the gaps between communities in making Malaysia a better place for all. You are a source of inspiration and your stories deserve to be told. On behalf of my fellow judges, we hope this award serves as a recognition and encouragement for you to continue changing more lives through the impactful work you are doing. Thank you. Thank you, Tan Sri Lee, for your passionate speech. There's a common theme from both speakers that really struck a chord with me. Be it big or small efforts, everyone can make a positive difference in the lives of others. Many of us might ask, I want to do good, but how do I start? What are some of the do's and don'ts that I should be aware of? To give us better insights, we have with us here today three Star Golden Hearts Award past winners who will share their experiences, tips and advice to start our own doing good journey. Let's welcome 2017 winner Uncle Kentang and 2020 winners Kennedy Michael and 71 representative Lai Chong Ho. Uh, thank you. First and foremost, thank you very much Uncle Kentang, Kennedy and Lai for taking the time out of your busy schedules to share with our audience your expertise and vast experiences in the social scene. Hopefully through today's topic of I want to do good, how do I start? More people will be inspired to do good and to take small steps in making a difference. As a start, um, let's get to know the work that everyone does. So um, can everyone be briefly share with us what does your organization do? What are the social challenges that you're addressing? And what are the outcomes and achievements so far? Uncle Kentang, if we could start with you. Uh, sure, thank you so much. Uh, we are providing uh, warring aid ambulance to the poor. Uh, we provide uh, transport to the hospital, provide uh, uh, Assist, uh, render assistance to the uh, underprivileged, like the blind, you know. Uh, we also uh, food aid, uh, hospital bed aid, anything. And we, 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 <laughs> we also do uh, free funerals, uh, provide funerals. During this COVID, a lot of uh, uh, people quite affected by the death of their, their, their loved ones. And uh, they look enough money to cover their funerals in this pandemic, um, quite a bad uh, situation, right? That's, that's, uh, we also provide a uh, Roma one ring it and uh, also uh, we have our old folks home, running old folks home. Uh, this, that's what we do. La. The challenges, you want to be the, the challenges, huh? Yes, it's really, great. it's really great to hear about some of the very heartwarming things that you have done. Um, might you be able to share with us some of the challenges that you face in carrying out your work? I think the challenges is uh, uh, in this pandemic is uh, uh, of course the COVID nineteen because we are we are we are quite worried about our own uh, uh, safety this and that and we have to be very sure. And then uh, of course, God bless uh, during this pandemic, we have only two percent that affected by COVID, uh, the whole team is about 60 of us, 2% uh, got uh, COVID. And we, of course, uh, this is the biggest challenge because when we approach the people who are quarantined at home, we need we bring them food. 
and we bring them uh, whatever medicine they want or vitamins they want, uh, it will be a, quite a challenge uh, for us to, to pass to them because uh, during that time, the COVID, the, we do not know even the staircase, the leaf, all these are affected uh, area that we have to be very careful. That's why we put down the PPE, everything uh, to send food. They look very funny, but uh, sending food also, you need to down PPE. So I think uh, the, the challenge is between ourselves. We, we, we were not, uh, we try to help everyone, but, but of course uh, we can't do that. Uh, so I think, uh, uh, of course, there are criticism, this and that, uh, but we take it at our strike and we just continue. Uh, I always say, uh, start small, uh, start small. Uh, you do not need to be very rich to start your, 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 your positive move. Uh, just begin with a smile, like what you are doing now. A smile is already warming the heart. This is also a sadaka or this is also charity by giving smile, by giving good words, uh, by giving all this uh, encouragement, you know, and we leverage on each other. Yeah. That's really great to hear, Uncle Kentang. It's very inspiring to know that despite all these challenges that you have, you still um, carry on. And like you said, you do take it in your stride and do your best to be, uh, move forward. I do hope that two of your colleagues that um, you mentioned had COVID, I do hope they reco they've recovered well and are you know, on the way to do more good work as well. So thank you so much for sharing, Uncle Kentang. Um, maybe right now we can move on to Kennedy. Kennedy, would you like to share with us uh, some of the things that you do? Yes, good evening, uh, Julian, and thank you. Uh, and I, I must say again, it's a pleasure and an honor to, to meet Uncle Kantang and also to be in the same room with Mr. Lai. Uh, hi, guys. Um, so our organization, um, uh, Alliance of River Tree, what we primarily do is river care. So it's river conservation, protection, and rehabilitation. However, um, you know, it's three years into our work. Uh, we celebrated our third anniversary uh, some, sometime last month. And uh, what we found is we're actually, uh, actually building communities, uh, one person at a time from the ground up. And in the larger context of what we do, we're actually helping to build a nation. Um, so River CPR becomes now just a platform uh, for transformation of, of people. Uh, so it's building people um, one person at a time, literally. Uh, the more we get into it, the more we realize that uh, that's what we need to do. I mean, you can only pick up so much rubbish uh, from the river uh, before you think it's never going to end. And then you have to go to the source and see why is this happening? And then you realize it's people, you know, it's individuals, and that's where the work is. That's really great to hear, Kennedy, uh, to know that you actually take it one step at a time. So very similar to Uncle Kentang as well, because a little really does go a long way. Um, aside from that, what are some of the challenges that you're facing uh, throughout your uh, conservation efforts for the river? To, to be honest, again, when we started, it was, you know, all the usual things. Uh, there was more rubbish than people. Um, there was always time because it's a volunteer uh, experience. Um, Money was never really a challenge, simply because we, when we set out, we decided that if we made money, uh, having money as the, the means to doing this, then uh, what happens when we run out of money or what happens when we don't have money? You know, so we put that aside. Money becomes a bonus. Yes, it is necessary, but uh, we had to find a way to continue the work that we do, even if we had no money at all. You know, and I'm quite pleased to say that the team and I, you know, because of the work that we do, we've managed to figure out how to do that. I, I think our biggest challenge always is going to be people. Really, uh, we have, we have a, a saying in, in River Tree, which is um, all problems uh, that, that we see in life, in the environment, it is created by people. And therefore, all the answers are always going to be with people. It's never going to be anywhere else. And some people say, you know, they're big companies and, you know, they're the ones damaging the environment and, and businesses and this and that. But you, you go further and you ask. There are also big companies that do really good work that don't damage the environment. And what's the difference? It's the people in that company, the people who own the company, the people who lead that company. So all the answers are, are people. And for us, another thing is that, uh, sure, it was hard, uh, when we started, you know, it's just volunteers to commit to 166 weeks uh, in a row, you know, unbroken to give up your weekends, to give up your public holidays, your, you know, uh, all that time. That, that's, a, that's kind of a sacrifice we made. But then after that, it became a game. 
So it was less of a challenge, more fun. And then it became like, what's the opportunity in this challenge? You know, what, what nugget can we dig out of it? So that, there's a, quite a fun element to it. Yeah, that's true. I think it's when it comes to people, it's like you mentioned, it's being able to help change a lot of things one person at a time. So very similar to Tentang, I think that's the whole great part about the sharing session about how one person can make quite a big difference because collectively when everyone comes together, that's where the change actually really comes about. So thank you very much um, for the very inspiring sharing uh, session, Kennedy. That's and well. now, uh, could I hear from live from 71, could you share with us a little bit more about what you do and some of the challenges that you face? Hi, so everybody, I'm live from the 71. So the 71 is an accredited uh, uh, impact-driven social enterprise. Uh, we formed in 2016. And uh, basically what we do is that we provide uh, vocational uh, training, yeah, vocational skill training uh, to teens with disabilities. So uh, at the moment, we have uh, 22 um, uh, beneficiaries at our center in, in, in Satya Alam. Uh, they are basically uh, have uh, autism, you know, they have uh, Down syndrome, autism, and also some physical impact uh, 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 beneficiaries. And they are all teens. After school going age, this is the issue that we want to, to tackle. So after school going age, this group of uh, beautiful people find difficulty in getting jobs. So therefore, um, 71 comes into providing uh, the vocational training uh, so that we can prepare them for employment in the future. At the same time, uh, at our at our center here, all our beneficiaries who who been trained here at our center, they will get paid. So today we are we are we are very we are happy uh, that at, uh, four of them that uh, have got more than thousand two salaries uh, with us, and the others are still are, are getting five to ten ringgit per hour for every hour that will they work at our center. So hopefully, you know that we will have more centers uh, 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 across, the, across the nation, uh, we can have more uh, 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 you know, disabled teens, especially from the B40 uh, family background or the single parentage will be able to benefit uh, from our impact. Yeah. Um, the challenges that we face are really, really real challenges. One, during the uh, MCO time, yeah, we all have SOPs. So uh, because of our facilities are not a huge factory, so we are just operate in a, sh in a shop lot. Uh, so our attendance, daily attendance has been reduced tremendously. But yet, I want to make sure that every one of them have the opportunity to come to train and to get paid. So we take rotation. So every day we have five to six of them coming in here, mornings, half, if, uh, afternoon session, morning session, stuff like that. Now, so that is a challenge. Uh, second challenge is this because we are focusing on B40 communities and single parentage. So these communities having, um, having financial constraint at, at, their, at their own level. So therefore, transportation, bringing their, their, their teens to our center is an issue, right? So, uh, so what we did is, I you know, we took an extra, extra, uh, extra mile where we actually provide transport. You know, we actually, you know, all our mummies and single mothers and even myself, you know, we go out. Uh, to fetch the, the teens uh, from their home, bring them, uh, bring them, you know, send them to trade and then send them back, that kind of thing. So these are the, the challenges that, that, that we are facing. Yeah. Right. Um, I think it's really great that through the work that you do, you're actually making sure that, you know, no one is left behind, especially like what you mentioned after their schooling days, this is where it's crucial for them to be able to find their own feet and you're actually able to provide these opportunities. And despite all the struggles that you have, you're still able to, you know, push forward to make sure that um, you'll be able to carry on doing your good work as well. Uh, thank you very much, Lai, for sharing with us your journey with 71. It's really amazing um, hearing from Uncle Kentang, hearing from Kedendi, as well as yourself about the work that you do for the community and impacting one life at a time. I think that's pretty much a very common theme for all three of you here. And speaking of impacting lives, we've seen an abundance of goodwill amongst Malaysians, especially during this unprecedented time, similar like what uh, everyone here has mentioned as well. Uh, many people want to help others, but they may not know exactly how to start or where do they start. Uh, so perhaps um, if I could get your advice in terms of what are some of the practical tips that you will give to um, everyday Malaysians who want to do good within their own capacity. Uh, perhaps Uncle Kentang, could you share with us some of the tips that you think would be useful? I think uh, it's quite easy. You just need to start from your heart. Because when, when your heart wants to do something, 
no one can stop you and nothing can stop you. And anything that you do from your heart, it will be uh, manifest into uh, returns by, you know, uh, positive energy. I said, uh, like, uh, for me, uh, you, when you, in this, in this pandemic, we see a lot of kind hearts. Actually, we too, uh, we are quite surprised by the uh, Malaysian spirit. Uh, of course, the downside is uh, about the pandemic. The other bright side is Malaysians uh, gathered like nobody business and help out in this pandemic. I, I can I can watch that because we received so many tons of food and also uh, donations and also this. So everybody start with a little. Uh, do not need to rush things in or you do not compete with other people. Do not see that uh, people doing this, I want to do that. Uh, you know, because they give 10 packets of rice, I want Okay, I'm so sorry. Um, I think we have a little bit of a connection issue with Uncle Kentang, but we'll come back to Uncle Kentang in terms of what more about not competing with others and how we can actually move yeah. forward. Uh, Uncle Kentang, so sorry. I will come back to you in terms of the tips that you can share. Uh, in the meantime, perhaps could I have Kennedy share with us maybe a tip um, about how Malaysians can do good? And we'll come back to Uncle Kentang in a bit. Hi, sorry, Kennedy, you're muted. Ah, uh, sure. Um, I'm going to echo what uh, Uncle Kentang said. Um, to to not compete, you know. Although it's a good thing, right? A uh, competition to do good would, would certainly change the world, because instead of, of destroying the world, everybody would be trying to do good for a, for a change. Um, but for for us, it's always the question of why. Why do you do what you do? You know, and and once you can answer that question, then the rest is good. The rest doesn't matter anymore. You know, if you, if you want to help someone, know why you want to help someone, be clear about that. And then you will find ways. Uh, it, the, the way will kind of open up. I, I know it sounds very esoteric, but really that's, that's what it is. You know, uh, in, in the work that we do, we've discovered that one of the most powerful tools is actually the human ego. Um, if you harness the power of the ego, you can do tremendous good. Now, uh, during the, the pandemic and the MCOs, um, a lot of our volunteers who come very regularly said, oh, you know, we, we're really sorry, we can't come, we want to come, we want to help. And I said, actually, where you are, uh, you can do powerful things. What we're doing is preventing trash from getting into the river so that the river can rehabilitate itself. So I said, go down to your uh, housing estate, your condo, pick up any rubbish that you see lying around especially the ones that are in the drain. You don't need 10,000 people, just one person. And you don't have to spend five hours. You can just do two minutes, three minutes every day. And that makes all the difference. For every single piece of trash that you pick up, uh, it's one less that we have to fish out of the river. So it's, it's not hard. You know, it's, it's not really difficult uh, to do simple things. Um, so start with, with where you are, work with what you have. You know, if you have 10 cents, give 10 cents. If you have 20 cents, give 20 cents. If you have one loaf, split it into half and share that half. Uh, it doesn't have to be big things because you, you can't help like thousands of groups of people, but you can help one person. And that one person in turn can help another person. So I think the most important thing is, is why and then work with what you have. That's really great, Kennedy. I think it's very, very practical as well because knowing that it just takes one small act of kindness to actually um, create a little domino effect. I think this is what you're saying as well. And I think that's very helpful, especially for people who really just want to figure out a way to help out. Um, but I'm not sure how I feel that this is really, really great. Um, perhaps, thank you so much, Kennedy. May I just add one, sure. one other thing? Of course. Um, which I was thinking about really. Uh, get informed. Mm -hmm. uh, be informed, you know, work with people who, like, for example, Uncle Kentang, support them, uh, Mr. Lai, support them, support anyone you know who's doing something because you can learn a lot and then you'll find your own voice in your own way. Um, so be informed. Yes, that's very true. I think it's like what you mentioned earlier when you said that you were very inspired by Uncle Kentang. It's really learning from people who've been doing the work as well to know that how you'll be able to help out. 
uh, and coming to this again, maybe I can circle back to Uncle Kentang. Uh, Uncle Kentang, might you be able to perhaps um, reshare again in, um, when you mentioned that you know you do not compete, when you talk about do not compete, uh, when it comes to doing work, um, would you like to share a little bit more about that? Uh, yeah, I think uh, the most important thing what I say is that uh, uh, is not to compete with anybody uh, and also uh, you do not need to compete. You know, you just, just we, we started from Pasas Prosin and it just turned out beautifully, you know, when we saw someone with no, no money to go to hospital, we start the taxi times and then we saw them lying uh, 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 we start with ambulance, then later we saw them dying, and then we start with the hearse, and then we start with education, we start wound care. All this uh, comes slowly, just go slowly. And and I believe uh, when you do it uh, with, with, with your, I, you know, it's so beautiful every day for me that we we, we create some smiles, some, some uh, uh, people who get assured by us. And they know that uh, their mother and father will be taken care of, or their children will be taken care of. We, we work with the cancer institute and this all the hospital around town. And 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 when their mother want to go back home, uh, they don't have money. You know, they want to go back for their last ride. The doctor says that they are no longer uh, 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 can be anything. Then they want to go back to their kampung. So it's so touching, you know, for us. It's so hard warming for us to bring them back and see them lying on the bed and they pass away and then we also to ask them. So I think uh, do not copy, just, just do what you what you think is good. I think uh, river is good because river cleaning, I mean, I mean, beautiful for Kennedy to do a job because that is the love for our children. We must prepare a good and right environment, a correct and good country in the future. If you love your children in the future, you don't throw rubbish, simply throw rubbish and into the river. This is what I, I respect, what can you do? And autism, Mr. Lai, there doing a lot of good things. This is what we can do for the our country. Please do it. Thank you very much, Uncle Kentang. That's really, really inspirational. I think it echoes also what Kennedy mentioned about supporting one another. And this is how actually everyone can do it as well. It's about really finding your purpose about why you want to do it. And in that way, support each other to create a better future. Uh, moving on, uh, Mr. Lai, might you be able to share with us some tips uh, uh, for anyone who would like to start out to do good within their own capacity? Yeah, so I think the uh, our, our tagline, I think our tagline is start near, start now. So I think, you know, uh, in order to do good, everything that we do actually have some goodness in it, right? So we don't have to do mega, mega things. We don't have to go, you no know, outreach very, very far. Start with the nearest circle near to you. Your own, your own, your, your family unit, for example, you know, uh, you do good to your family, to your neighbor, which is the person is staying next to you, to your friends, relatives, family members, you know, start near. Right? So every one of us have got some weakness. <clears throat> every one of us have got some shortcoming. Every one of us have got some worries, you know, try to understand them. You know, that's how you can do good uh, by supporting uh, them. Uh, so start near. But the most important thing is start now. Don't think too much. Yeah. So if you keep on thinking, thinking, analyze, analyze, analyze here. You know, want to want to do so many things, and then keep on thinking which one is better, which one is 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 is, is best. You end up not doing anything, right? So start near, start now. You were just doing fine. Yeah. That's really great. Thank you very much, Mr. Lai. I think what we can take away from what everyone here has shared is first and foremost, Malaysians are actually a very, very caring bunch. I think this is very evident in terms of the people that you yourself have worked with and yourselves as well. And I think one common thing when it comes to about how people want to start, do, start well and do well is basically to really find out um, what is what is the purpose of you wanting to help out someone? So um, echoing what Candy mentioned, knowing what you want to do and what you want to help, why you want to help. And from there, just basically start. Um, and it's about being genuine as well, like what Uncle Kentang mentioned, to really start from the heart and just go with um, helping people as much as you can. And um, Lai, you mentioned as well to start, uh, same thing as Kennedy actually, to really find out how you can start within your own circle itself 
whether you know it's picking up the trash within your condominium and also finding out um, who are your family and friends that might need help within your inner circle as well and finding smaller ways to which, in which you can actually do um, a little bit of a change and bring about some difference. So it's a very inspirational session and it's great hearing from everyone, um, especially within the different capacities that you do. Um, perhaps is there any last words that anyone would like to say, Uncle Kanta? Is there anything that you'd like this to say is, to inspire my uh, to do good? Yeah, I think I think this is what about we call oxytocin. Oxytocin is about something that you feel fuzzy in your in, in your body, this and that and then you see when you go out, step out, you, you have someone. Somebody out there might see you helping someone and they feel good. And when they feel good, they feel they, they, they want to go help someone, someone also. So this is like a, a wildfire spreading. So we, we start with ourselves and we, uh, somebody might have noticed us and they, they say, oh, this is good. You know, this is good. Then I must also do something good. So this can go and become contagious. So it will make our Malaysian country better and, and we can enjoy our life here. So this is what we are trying to propagate and make everybody happy, make everybody feel loved and uh, share together whatever wealth we have. That's really great. It's, it's a very interesting phrase actually to say that kindness is contagious because it's very, very true. When you see someone doing good and if you yourself do good, it kind of inspires you to want to continuously do that. And that's what it takes as well to create a culture of kindness in a way. So that's very, very inspiring, Uncle Kentang. It's really great to hear that from you. Um, Kennedy, is that something that you'd like to add on? For final yes, words? I would like to echo um, what my colleague, mentor and co-founder, Hadiman Sogani, has always advised, which is um, show up for yourself. It doesn't matter if you're alone. Uh, if you know why you're there, then, it, then you, you'll do what you need to do and leave other people to do what they need to do. And eventually you will find that that consistency of showing up will attract the right kind of people to help you and to support you. But uh, never make it a thing to rely on someone or to judge another person as to why they don't do stuff. You know, everyone's got their own path. You have chosen this path. And all you have to do is you just have to show up and you just have to show up consistently. And that's really it. You know, don't worry about whether you're going to have a thousand people behind you because uh, all the good that you need to power what you do, you have it, not someone else. You're the power. That's really good. It's not having any doubts when you want to actually be able to start something because um, I think it's like Wang Kukuntang mentioned, once people see you doing something else, eventually because of the genuine hard work that you put in, there will be people who also echo and you come to a circle where you find like-minded people as well and it's about creating uh, this kind of inspiring work that can be trickled down to many, many people as well. Um, Mr. Lai, thank you very much, Kennedy. Uh, Mr. Lai, how about yourself? Any final words? Yeah, so I think uh, it's always my dream that Malaysia, we can build an ecosystem of goodness. All right. So, so really, so I hope that you know individuals, social enterprises, NGOs, government agencies, corporates, GLC, MNCs, how big, how big you are and how small you are, come together as one. Together, we build an ecosystem of goodness. And I think it is something very, very possible, and it must be done, you know, as we are moving into a more, very, uh, more and more competitive world, more and more materialistic world. You know, let us instill the element of humanity, all right? Because that, after all, makes us human. You know, for many, many years, thousand years to come. So, so let us together as one build this ecosystem of goodness, and, and that's just really I hope that you know all of us can do that. Yeah. That's really great. Thank you very much, Mr. I think one of the takeaways that we can take away here that it's a common theme for um, each and every one for you, uh, Uncle Kentang, Candy, and as well as Mr. Lai. You guys are looking to create a a world where people actually do come together, but what is most important is that anyone who wants to do good is to really to really take that first step and to really have a very genuine purpose in terms of what you do, why you do what you want to do as well. So um, thank you very much for your sharing sessions. I think it's very safe to say as well. Um, we have people like um, all three of you are Golden Hearts winners. There are so many more people out there um, who wants to do good. And I hope that this session will actually help them um, really to have the courage to step out and do what exactly they want to do to help people and to create a future of kindness um, within every single Malaysian out there. So um, as 
especially this is a reason why we have the Golden Hearts Award to really recognize people uh, like yourselves. And I'm sure there are so many more out there. And for people who are actually looking to want to make a difference, just start. I think that's the main takeaway that we can take from, uh, away from this session as well. So thank you very much, uh, Uncle Kentang, Kennedy and Mr. Lai for actually sharing the work that you do and also how everyone else can do their part as well. It's really been inspiring and it's an honor to actually meet every single one of you here today. So thank you very much. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, thank you so much, Uncle Kentang. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That was indeed an inspiring sharing session and I hope you managed to pick up a tip or two and feel motivated to do something good, no matter how big or how small. Ladies and gentlemen, we've now come to the time that everyone has been waiting for, the announcement of this year's Star Golden Hearts Award winners. Selected from over 450 nominations, the winners represent a diverse range of social causes, including livelihoods and economic empowerment for vulnerable communities, environmental health and food security, quality education for school children, and social development of people with disabilities, among others. And here are your winners for Star Golden Hearts Award 2021. Uh, you have to come here by yourself. We saw the situations like the B40 are suffering. Many of them, they do not have a good place to quarantine themselves. Actually, this quarantine center is not just quarantine. 75% of the operation is just like a hospital. It is a war zone. I love working with children. So that was the main thing, that this was a calling because I found that I, I love working with children. But the other thing that gave me a passion was the, my background. And I could understand uh, what the children and the families were going through. So. That brought about a, a balance to the whole uh, effort. And I, I'm, I'm also a child at heart. <laughs> Project Kindness was it started. I was inspired by the kids. I think the inspiration came from the kids because when I went there in early 2019, I felt like there's a need for me to discover something, to discover something that would actually help the kids. So one day I took them out because I felt like they are, they're being confined in the classroom. They're not interested with whatever I'm doing in the classroom. I was actually singing with them. I, I'm not a good singer. I, I sang with them, but they're not interested with whatever I'm trying to do. So what I was trying to do back then, I was trying to make them feel comfortable, to feel like the school is a safe space. The best thing that the students have said, uh, not to us, but to the volunteers who have been teaching them will be thank you teacher, thank you for making the classes so interesting that I can follow through and now I've grown, I've improved and I can read, I can speak in English. I think to any teacher or volunteer or parent that is a great um, achievement that they should celebrate. Yeah. Bagi pendapat saya, kita jangan berharap pada bantuan. Kita cuba usaha. Kan kita dah tengok sekeliling kita ni pembangunan makin naik. Ha, kita jangan apa ni? Jangan asyik perlu bantuan je. Kita usaha bangkit. It is kind of a culture shock to me. It was the first time I saw loin cloth clad penanan, naked children running about. The children do not go to school. Being a Malaysian. I feel that it's my obligation to help them. We help to improve the craft made by the Penan women and we help them to sell in the region and internationally. And from the profits we make, we channel it back to the community and we focus on education sponsorship. <laughs> Walaupun orang Melayu, saya rasa bukan sesuatu yang pelik ataupun sesuatu yang tidak logik untuk belajar bahasa Mandarin kerana kita satu Malaysia. Kita duduk, kita bagi keluarga dalam satu Malaysia. Kita duduk dalam kitar uh, pelbagai kaum, Melayu, India, Cina. Dan bila kita belajar ini, kita lebih uh, menghormati mereka sebab kita faham apa yang mereka cakap. Saya lebih, lebih hormat, saya lebih hormat. 
happens to the blind athletes when they stop playing football. That's where pen disabled football comes in. You know, to give you employment, to work as a blind muscle, you know, to generate income, to work with us as a sports counselor, to work with us as a sports motivator. That's fan disabled football at large. Our concept. It's it's just not playing football and winning medals. It's it's changing lives. Our dream is always to have our own dream center. You play, you work, you live, you sleep, everything there. We produce more talents. For our B40s as well that we hire and also for the ex-convicts, we do not want them to forever be a lorry assistant or a lorry clean-down and whatnot. We really want to retrain them, reskill them and possibly in the future look at whether we can get this talent to, to take better positions in the company or even find better positions out there. We are also looking at providing a simple grant where our guys who are currently working with us can in the future take this grant to become a gas agent and where they can run in the local areas and start being their own boss. More than 50% of the waste that end up in the landfill is organic waste. If I succeed to manage reducing the organic waste, it means that half the waste, imagine half the waste is gone in the landfill. Uh, the public is not really aware on the environment the issue. Even though they're aware, but they have a lot of excuses not to do it. Uh, I think I, I have the responsibility to really like protecting them, to make sure the, the environment is really like can be sustained to our next generation or the next next generation at least. A big congratulations to the 10 winners. Your selfless and innovative social work is truly inspiring. Each winner receives a trophy, certificate and 5,000 ringgit in support of their good work. We'll also be carrying their stories on the STARS media platforms, so do stay tuned to get to know them more. Ladies and gentlemen, we still have a special award to be announced. Every year, our award partner Yayasan Gamuda presents the coveted Gamuda Inspiration Award to one winner selected from the 10 winners. This year, this special accolade is awarded to not one, but two winners. Each winner will receive additional grants from Yayasan Gamuda in recognition and support of the winner's unwavering commitment to helping communities. So, who are the winners of this year's Gamuda Inspiration Award? The first winner is Suriana Welfare Society. Congratulations! As a non-profit organization, Suriana Welfare Society protects the rights of children and single mothers through various educational and upskilling programs. As a Gamuda Inspiration Award winner, they will receive a 50,000 ringgit grant from Yayasan Gamuda to support the scaling of Suriana's anchor project, the Play and Learn Centre to positively impact the B40 community. Let's hear what the Suriana team has to say. Well, we feel very, very honoured uh, and appreciated um, for this recognition and support given to the work of Suriana. Thank you very, very much. Uh, it comes as a pleasant surprise as well. And it is a testimony of the combined effort of the members of the community and us working together towards a common goal in uh, ensuring a better future for families and children. You know, this past one year since last March has been so challenging in terms of community work. And uh, we were caught up with a new norm of having to face with COVID. And as a result, families were placed in a very difficult position. And we began uh, being involved in an immediate and spontaneous work to work with the community and the families. And so my team, our team, immediately began to work out new projects to help families to cope with the new norm. Until today, we're still doing that. And in the process, we've discovered orphans, children who've lost their, either one of their parents 
and young mothers and people have lost their jobs and the hungry. And so to cope with the new norm, we have now to look ahead for the next two to three to five years and ensuring the better future for families and children in health and education. This award comes as an encouragement to do better and to reach a great heights in touching lives. It is something that we are doing together with the community at large. This award actually goes to the members of the community because they own the project. This is the first time ever where the community owns a project. We have crossed so many barriers and I was sharing with them that how we look forward to working and reaching great heights. To the friends in Gamuda, to the friends in Star, thank you very much for being part of this work. I'm so, we are so thrilled and uh, that we are able to work together and provide and change lives, change the world for children so that they will have a better future in the new norm. Thank you once again. Thank you and congratulations once again, Suryana Welfare Society. The second winner of the Gamuda Inspiration Award is Crisis Release Services and Training, or better known as CREST. CREST is also a non-profit organization and they have been offering humanitarian assistance to needy communities affected by disasters and crises, especially during the COVID-19 pandemic. In support of CREST's inspiring work, and the scale of their efforts locally and internationally, Yayasan Gamuda is awarding an additional 50,000 ringgit to Crest. This brings Crest's grant amount up to 100,000 ringgit as a Gamuda Inspiration Award winner. Congratulations, let's hear it from the Crest team. Uh, first and foremost, on behalf of Crest Malaysia, we would like to take this opportunity to express our gratitude towards Star Foundation as well as Yayasan Gamuda for recognizing the work that Crest Malaysia has done uh, and for in the community. Uh, to be very honest, this award means a lot to Crest Malaysia. And it is not just for the communities that we serve, but it's also to those people that have worked alongside with us and support Crest Ministry for the past 21 years. So throughout 21 years, this is something that uh, I cannot say this is something that what we have, uh, what we receive as a payback, but this is something that we are really able to uh, receive something very special. And this is the first time uh, when we receive it, we are, we, we are not able to believe it and we are not able to uh, uh, Imagine it, uh, how, how great is it? So thank you very much. Thank you and congratulations, Chris. And there you go, ladies and gentlemen, all our winners of this year's Star Golden Hearts Award. Thank you once again for the wonderful work that you do in making Malaysia a better place. To all viewers and supporters out there, thank you for watching, for nominating your heroes and for doing the good work that you have been doing. Do look out for each winner's story and video that will be published on the STARS media platforms starting from tomorrow onwards. We look forward to seeing everyone again next year. I am Julianne, wishing you well, stay safe and have a great evening.